Smash It's a hard song to sing, you should try it. <laughs> so, you guys were all on a show called Smoggle, that's nice. That's what they say. Yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, it was 10, 12, 12 years ago. Sometimes I can literally forget that it happened. People are like, you think I'm gonna show? I'm like, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah was. Was awful, yeah. <laughs> that show and everything. That's a fourth of your life you were missing. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> not, <laughs> not bring it up. <laughs> well, I just wanted to tell you guys and lead you off with this, um, which was that, uh, that that show made a very big impression on me in my life. And it's because when I was growing up, uh, my father left when I was young, and Superman comic books really kind of taught me how to be a good person. Um, and so when I heard about the show, I got very anxious. I got very nervous about it because I was like so protective of that character. Um, and, and, but when I saw that first episode and saw what you guys were up to, I just kind of breathed a sigh of relief. And I, I was able to just kind of embrace it as the Superman. You're welcome, Jeremy. Exactly. That's what I'm sure everybody out there is trying to feel they kind of feel the same way with that, but I mean, were you guys feeling any of that pressure when the show first started that this is going to be this new iteration of this classic character that people hold so dear? Kristen? Kristen? Yeah, this Kristen. is what they're going to do. Kristen. <laughs> this is the thing Spotlight then goes on her. Wow, look at that.
been a lot of people who would say, I'm so sad that the show's over. I'm just like, we ran out of stories, guys. <laughs> like, Clark had to move on. Like, that, that's the, that's the, that's How many the episodes did you do? Uh, like 220 something. You had so many episodes of one yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's great? Even when I play Supernatural, there's two of them. Yeah. 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 But what's great is that we see kids coming up to us, like young kids, and they're starting to watch Smallville. So it's a whole new generation. These guys right here, he loves Lex, raise your hand. Yeah! Uh, so it's, it's nice to see you can watch it on Hulu and revisit all of it. The, the Blu-rays are out, and so it's nice. Yeah, well, uh, Michael, I mean, you said you think Gene Hackman's the best uh, Lex. I'm sorry, but I disagree with you, sir. Because um, I think you're the best Lex. Michael's Lex or that like, best Lex. Best Lex. Best Lex. It's funny because that would have been really funny if you're like, I disagree with Eugene Hackett's now. Kevin Spacey is Kevin Spacey. Laugh, just you know. The only the only uh, pushback I got on it from many of my friends was like, oh well, Clancy Brown in the Animated was great. And I was like, Clancy Brown is amazing, but when, what you were up to with that character, like just the struggle of trying to do the right thing, that was something I wasn't prepared for in this show, and the bond that Clark and Lex had. Um, I think the biggest struggle was Lana having to marry Lex. <laughs> <laughs> I, think was, I think that was a struggle. You know what, though? We had a lot of fun. We like, you know, she was really young when we started the show. I was 23, you were... Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm much older, Michael. I was at twenty-seven. You were seventeen. One more year up. I was. You were eighteen. <laughs> yep. And I was twenty-seven. I was really nice when we started shooting. Right, and then she started to grow into a woman, and I was slowly <laughs> turning into a man. I think we got the show. We got along. We started respect for each other. We really enjoyed it, and those episodes when we were together were kind of fun. They were a lot of fun. I don't know where this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> into the, the evil Lex that we know from the comics. And it makes the, that journey so much more heartbreaking because we root for you so hard in that show. And I don't know, like, it, was that apparent to you right from the start that like you, you had a very different brother? I think that's, it, the show has evolved into something that I love and I you know, take very seriously and to the heart. And I think a lot of people who listen to it. So if you haven't listened to it, they're both on it numerous times. It's a lot of fun. It's called Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. It's, on Spotify and Apple. And, uh... Philanthropy-wise, Michael has always yeah. cared about like helping people. Even when we were on Smallville, you went to the Ronald McDonald House a lot, I thought. Yeah, so he's always been in the So I think that maybe it's the causally, it's the other way around. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you talk about how real and raw you get on that. I, I always appreciate people who do that so openly because it gives tacit uh, permission to other people to do that and to take their mental health seriously and to take their self-care seriously. Yeah. And I think we need more examples of that, especially for people like, like you and people with platforms to say, you know, it's okay not to be okay and it's okay to, to seek help. There's nothing wrong with yeah. you for doing that, you know? And also, the most important thing I always say at the end of every show is just be good to yourself. Mm -hmm. We're so hard on ourselves and we're not good looking enough. We're not good enough. We're not this. And I'm like, this is you. This is you. You were created for a reason. You're out there for a reason. It's just like, you know, we only have one life as far as we know. Just be good to yourself. You know? I remember one of the I listened to podcast and I remember Zach Levi being in there and he was like, he, he was talking about the idea that so many billions and trillions of things had to happen in the universe for you to exist. Yeah. And then you got to appreciate that. You are special. Yeah. That's right. Like, we all are. And I just, I get kind of chills when you, when you kind of said it that way. So, yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of your podcast. Thanks, buddy. I love it. <laughs> he does. He listens to me. He'll go, dude, I really love your conversation with this. Really great. And other times he'll go, it was a little boring. I guess, I guess it was kind of boring this time. It was good. But it was like, you had a hard time with that guest. I could see you reaching out. You say you're trying to push, get some stuff out of them. But, uh, By the way, this is always like after it airs. So my notes don't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. Right, 
Judd Allen Towers this week if you want to listen to Judd. So you can watch it on YouTube, subscribe, re write a review, and thank you. There you go. Well, uh, Tom, I have to say, I also loved uh, your work in Lucifer. Um, everyone? Um, what, what was it that uh, kind of spoke to you about that to like, get you back into that kind of comic book world there? Um, I, 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 I've been a fan of the show already. Um, I knew someone who knew Lauren German very well and sort of called and was like, you know, what's it like, and blah, blah, blah. And when I got there, I, 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 I thought it was the complete opposite of Clark. Clark was always sort of, didn't have information trying to figure it out, where Pierce, and, and he was sort of like ahead of everybody, so I thought that was cool, maybe a little more Lex-ish. Yeah. Um, and I got there, and Tom, Alice, and Lauren, and it, it was such a cool, fun set, like, let's have fun, but get the work done, and I just was like, I don't know, I, it, it, I felt very at home, and um, I just, it was just one of those things where you're like, this is going to be fun, and let's go do it. Yeah. It was kind of that song. It is, it is just a ton of fun. Uh, man, I, I did love, too, that we're in an age now where a show can get canceled on one network and the fans can bring it back to life on another. I mean, I, I think that, that is so, so cool. I think that was because of season three. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> Either got canceled because of me or got brought back. I don't know. Or everyone was like, we're not stopping this now. Bring it back. <laughs> But that is cool because our fandom is kind of the biggest currency we have when we're watching these shows. And well, the these shows that, don't exist without you guys. Yeah. Like that's like if you guys don't watch it, if you, no one listens to this podcast, the podcast doesn't work. Like, it doesn't. It's yeah. all because of you guys. And that show in past that I did, and no one watched it. So, fun thanks to you. Okay. It happens. You watch. It's like, oh, you were the one. You were. The one. And now more than. Talking about now more than ever, you, the, the fans have a voice, and and I'm gonna tell you guys, they listen. The studios, the TV networks, they literally can't get enough information from you guys because it moves the dial for what they want to do. So you know, be positive. Don't you know? You can be, you, be, you know, don't be a jerk. <laughs> you know, like, tell them what you think because I'm telling you, there are people. Their job is to monitor it and, and access that information. They're they're dying for it. Absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, going back to Smallville, I think one of the things that I loved the most about the show was the episodic nature each week. You got a new, brand new self-contained story each week, which I absolutely love. Um, and you had so many amazing guest stars on the show. I mean, Amy Adams was on that show in season one. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't seen her since. I wonder if she's, if she's blocked that out or not. <laughs> that was quite the role. She's kind of busy. She is. But, but she, she was great. She I was remember, great. I remember she's working with her and just being like, this she just, she had the magic, and obviously, yeah, I remember, so I, I started showing my wife Smallville. Um, she's huge at all the CW shows, but she never watched Smallville, and I think my nerdom is kind of rubbing off on her a little bit. She was like, about oh, the Superman show, I was like, no, oh, it's really good, trust me. Um, and so she's on season five now, when Amy came on, she was just like, wait, because she had all the makeup on. <laughs> she was like, no, really, it's Amy Adams. It was a dislocating jaw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that's a hard role that to explain to an actor. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, hey, I got this offer for you. Check out this role. Eat, eat, deer, she, she, did she, she did eat a deer. She did eat a deer, right? I thought I remember she eating a deer. Yeah. Gosh, you do remember things. I remember that for some reason. I think I thought it was so bizarre. <laughs> when you were a witch. Well, yeah. You know, one of, the, one of the things Smallville did, and I think it added to longevity, is it, it um, supported performance. Um, the directors, I've said this before, but the directors, if, if you didn't give notes of performance, you weren't asked back as a director. That's so true. We, we really wanted to like bring stuff out of it, and um, not all TV is like that. A lot of times it's just say the words move on, you know. But um, I didn't know any better, I just thought that we were supposed to. We did a lot of takes on Smallville. Yeah. Like a, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> not, I have not, yeah, like never since. I've never allowed to do two that. Two or three. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it? We would like it. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't because someone wasn't doing it right. It was, it was capturing nuances yeah. and, 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 and creating, uh, capturing material for the editors to kind of piece things together. Um, and they care about that as a, as a production, so that was helpful. Uh, well, and I 
mean, it, it was one of, it was kind of part of the genesis of the superhero property at that time, like Brian Singer's X-Men and, and the others that were, treating it like real scripts and really, you know, it's not just pop entertainment here. We're developing characters that just so happen to have superpowers. And that really does come through in, in all of that stuff because the characters are what we care about first. It also helped that we would do like extreme close-ups. <laughs> that were like the cameras are like, why are we even doing these medium shots? Or just, <laughs> just get a mask and go, boom, yeah. and we're done. Because that was small. And now, you know, translated because all those shows, we were the first, to be honest. Smallville was like the first of all the shows. Yeah. So tell your wife that it all started in Smallville. I'm hoping somebody got that on video because I'm showing it to her later. <laughs> Mike Rosenbaum tells you to keep going. <laughs> It was funny though because when she first saw you, and this was so weird because she's a huge horror film fan as well, so the very first time you came on screen she was like, oh, he's from Urban Legend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is Mike Rosenbaum. Trust me, you're going to like him, like in the Lex a lot more, but like, this is, I, I, I just often like want to in, in, you know, tell people that like the show does have this very good human drama at its center. Um, and that the powers are almost secondary to Smallville. It's almost, it really is, you're right, like taking care of Clark and taking care of Lex. It's relationships. It really is. Relationships, you know. Yeah, I mean, relationship with, he has with his father, juxtaposed with me and Lionel. Yes. Which is tough, so I just think if I would have had Jonathan Kent as a father, he had yeah. Lionel Luther with his powers, what would happen? So, yeah, you know, exactly. What if her parents didn't pass away? What if, you know, she didn't live with her aunt now, and, you know, she was raised by the, Two people love her. Wolves. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that's interesting. And, and that evolved, you know, because we did a lot of Freak of the Week in the beginning. Yes. And then we started evolving into some stories and through line, like, you know, what's going on. It, it just, it got, it got better. The show got better. Yeah, until well. the blur. Like, I, I was like, <laughs> the blur. You were the blur. Uh -huh. The blur was, I was just like, really? Jensen, we were doing something in the football thing, he's the coach, and you know, we come to set, and 
I'm like, hey man, what's up? He's like, hey, he looks at me and goes, I do want to let you guys know we will be taking some audience Q&A, so... Um, what was your guys' favorite season or storyline to film? I know you. You came up to the table for an autograph. We did. Jennifer. Favorite Jennifer. Favorite season or storyline? <laughs> favorite season. Go ahead, Chris. Season or storyline? I feel like we talked about this, didn't we? Or we talked to someone about it. Um, <laughs> season or storyline? Mother. I thought what did I say about ice cream after brushing teeth? I think my favorite to perform was season six. It was a lot of fun for me to perform. Yeah. Tom. <laughs> The first one was, the first season was cool because it was so new, and there was something about the final season, because we knew it was a final season, I think I appreciated everything more that year. So I would say very final season. You just wanted to put on the film. No, I didn't. It's <laughs> something for me liked when I started becoming evil. When I threw my dad out of the building, when I started oh. understood where I came from, so then I could kind of let loose. That was, so I don't know what season that was, but there's some in season three when I'm wearing a straight jacket and this oh my God. mental yeah. institution. There's some crazy stuff that really was tough to do. And, you know, so there's moments from every season. The bloopers were good. The choice that he makes there too, yeah. if you remember, it was really Lexus. important in that turn. Yeah, Lexmas was a great episode. <laughs> And I will say, like, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, I hope you've seen it all, but the moment when you're wrestling with your younger self and you toss him in the fire, like, that was, that was a moment for me where I literally, I think I screamed at the screen, like, don't do that! <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Yeah. It was like, well, it was, really it was almost, it. it was saying, you're gone. Yeah. Like, this there's is it. now this part of me. No turn back. Yeah, there's yeah. no good left. That it was, was, was kind of sad, yeah. Thank you for that question. Thank you. So much. Thank you. you. We'll Over here, get faster on our responses. Uh, yes, my name is Ed, and um, I, I love when you guys got to do some of the lighter moments in the series. Um, I don't, Chris and I had to do a lot of like, angst and drama, but uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about Tom when you did the, the transference of you know, acting like Lionel, which was so hilarious. Was you, did, you nailed that, it was so good. And then I'm thinking of Michael when he um, got into a discussion with Lionel. And, about the family drama and said, well, why don't we just go on Oprah, you know, and it was so funny. Did, did you guys um, think that there could have been even more lighter moments, or did you think there was a pretty good balance of those kind of funny moments? I thought there was a pretty good balance. You know, I think they opened it up a little more as the series went on. They sort of trusted our characters, and we knew what we were doing, and we could sell those lines. Uh, there was a line that I said to The Flash that he says, I want something, and I go, well, I want to... Ponytail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was ponytail. Disappointment yeah. abounds. Yeah. Or something. I remember, I was like, that's a funny line. It's, it's yeah, yeah, that was a funny line. I don't think anything liked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I did. Or like that. There was another line of yours. Uh, it was when you, I think it was the Onyx episode when you go like evil and you actually like take the hostage in the barn. And uh, uh, the great Ed O'Toole, like she talks to you and she's like, what do you want? And you just look at her and go like, the world, Mrs. Ken. And I was like, the world. <laughs> the way you said that. You're going to help me get it. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was such a fun episode because I really didn't know how big I could be. I was kind of afraid to go, oh my God, I don't know how. And they're like, no, we'll protect you. Just, just let it go. And I remember that one take where I just let it go. And you could tell the crew was kind of like, oh, that's a squad. <laughs> <laughs> really uh, so I really had fun with that. Yeah. And then, and Tom, if I remember right. One I question know. only, sir. <laughs> no, go ahead, make it quick. <laughs> I remember you told me that uh, John said that you really nailed him and he didn't feel he did you justice. You, something like that, do you remember that? And, 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 what, and, uh, and the one where you changed uh, roles, your line. Oh, John Glover and James yeah. Farns, yeah. which is one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, he, uh, I, I would say it's in front of him, but um, he was like, you played me so well. <laughs> How did you do that? I'm like, well, you know, my lines were complicated. I kind of chose these you know, physical things that you do. Yeah. And he was like, Clark is so hard to play. And I was like, what do you mean why? He goes, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he just stands 
Wednesday. And I was like, yeah. Try doing that job. Go ahead, Tony Award winner. Good luck. You nailed John. You nailed You really did. That was great. Over here, please. Yeah, hi. My name's Corey. Uh, I had a question, I guess, primarily for Kristen, but everybody can jump in. Yeah. Hey, great reading last night, bud. Thank you, sir. Small of the night, he was great. Great yeah. reading. Yeah, that was, that was fantastic. Thank you guys for doing that. It was super fun. <laughs> I am the villain of the story. There we go. <laughs> um, so, with a character like Lana, who's typically played pretty straight in most episodes, you were speaking of being a witch earlier. In an episode like that, where it's just so different, and you get to play this wild character, is that as fun slash completely awkward as it seems like it would be? It's really fun. It's also embarrassing. <laughs> but it's really fun. Yeah, I had a great time, but it's, it, like, it's not just a witch. It's a witch who does spells in Latin. Yeah. So it's like with a hand gesture. So it was weird. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's it. The end. Here's the next question. So, Michael, you said a lot of times you were trying to add some moral confliction to some of the lines that Lex would have, trying to kind of bring your own sense of that. So, for Tom and Kristen, what kind of nuances do you felt like you kind of added to your characters throughout the scene, kind of more than what the character was on paper? I mean, that's an interesting question. I. Especially in the beginning, I had no idea what I was doing acting-wise, so probably I wasn't thinking deeply about it. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Lex's character is interesting because you know where he's going. With someone like Lana, there's no, like, she, as far as you know, she ends up kind of the same as she always was. It's not like she goes through a giant change, which indeed she ended up doing on the show. So, playing the trauma of her past and finding that how she grapples with that in the present and finds her way is where the nuance lies um, for that character, I think. More than Lex, who's like, has a abusive father and is trying to deal with a fortune and, yeah. So it's, it's like, it, felt, it feels like a very different thing for me. Um. I, I, much like Clark, I was just trying to figure out what was going on around me, <laughs> yeah. um, and that was helpful, and I missed that, like I really didn't know what was happening. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> we, got, we got some Superman fans. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some Superman fans over here. Oh, that, wait, wait, what was the Indiana Jones thing? I think that was it. <laughs> 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll get to Indiana Jones. Here we go. So, so, what <laughs> those crossovers like the Flash and Aquaman? What are, what would have it been like without them? What would it have been like without the yeah, Justice like, League crossovers? Yeah. I always think it's funny. Like we we would get these characters coming out, like that would visit Aquaman and you know um, the Flash and and the, who's the Green Arrow? There is Arrow, but who's the Cyborg? The Cyborg. Short blonde hair. Green, uh, Sparrow? Green, uh, Canary. Green, 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 Yellow Canary. Yellow Canary. Yellow Canary. Yellow Canary. Yellow Canary. Yellow Canary. So the crossovers were interesting because, I won't name names, but uh, I always thought it was funny that like, where, where were they before they showed up and where did they go? Like where, were they just, they're not around after? They were hanging out in the tropics, more ash there. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. 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 I always thought that was funny. Thanks, buddy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, my name's Chris Jenner, so I say it's an art meet you guys. Seriously. Nice to meet you, my friend. I, uh, I, I, I watched Smallville from late 2020 to summer of 21 because a friend of mine was trying to convince me for years to try it out. I'm like, nah. Then I, one day it's like, fine, I'll check it out. Then I got hooked and so instantly. Um, Michael, I have a question for you. So. A big fan of Dressed as Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> people are like, uh, okay, so you think it's very funny? Like, thanks, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Flash. Cool. Yeah, I got yeah, it. To be fair, I thought about doing a Clark cosplay, but when I found out you guys were coming, I thought about it. So, I mean, I thought about it. 
pre, it's like a premeditated situation. I um, thought about doing a judge, but I didn't do it. And you know, what is your question, you sir? You have a question for Michael. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, so I, uh, I'm getting ready to start my senior year at uh, Eastern University, and I work for the radio department in WEIU, and I'm starting my own podcast soon. And I was wondering, like, what advice would you give me on starting a podcast? Be genuine, be vulnerable, uh, you know, don't talk down to your guests, be a guest yourself, be like, you know, like a fly on the wall that's like, who wants to hear what you're saying, and try to find interesting things to talk about, and... Uh, I, I also think that what, what makes you um, special or individual, like your point of view, is what will translate. Because if you're just trying to be like everybody else, no one's going to listen. Like, it's point of view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's my point of view. <laughs> you're listening to inside of you. Hey, well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, man. For that question over here. Hello, my name is Lexi. Um, oh, sexy Lexi. Hello, hello. Do call me Lex Luther? Oh. Um, so I just want to thank you guys so much for uh, my childhood and high school years. You guys really helped me through a lot of difficult things. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit of a backstory, real fast. My sister gave me the first four seasons, and she said, "Just try this out." And I said. Superman? Are you kidding me? Is he like overrated? And then I just watched the first episode and I was hooked. Aww. Yeah. And from there, um, it was awesome. And I was like, every day I would come home from school and I'd be like, I'm gonna watch Smallville. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then um, my dad got into it. And then he bought me the last few seasons. And uh, he actually passed away in, in February. So we were just sitting, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Soon, but you had those awesome moments together, right? Exactly. We got to see you throw your dad out the Examples of fatherly love. And my dad was like, Are you kidding me? That puts things in perspective. He's like, you're not, Your dad was like, You're not going to do that to me, are you? There was, there was moments. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, my question for you guys is when you guys first came across, uh, I don't know how you came about the roles, but how did you choose? Hey, I want to do this, or I want to be Clark, I want to be Lex. Were you originally going to play for Lana, or were you going to be Lois? Because I'm not just going to say, you're going to make good roles. Yeah. 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 So, what did you guys like, choose? Like, yeah, I want to do this role. This seems really cool. Like, I needed a job. <laughs> <laughs> we just auditioned. I think Michael's a little bit different, but. <laughs> yeah, he was like an actor. He was like, he had, like, he had um, uh, done stuff. I, I looked up to him at the beginning. So we're all... <laughs> we're not so <laughs> What a dick. <laughs> I, I mean, Christmas was cast before. I, I, my final edition was with Chris. The first one cast, yeah. Chris and Crew. Hey. And I, to be honest, like, you know, it, it, it was Superman in high school without being Superman, which I liked because I didn't, I wasn't, I, I thought playing Superman would just be too easy. For the character, you just fly around when you had a problem and fix it. Um, but to see a kid struggling through high school, that was interesting to me. Yes, and I needed a job. I thought, you know, let's make this cool. Let's see what happens. Well, you did and, a great uh, job. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Over here. Hi. Well, why don't we do a little thing called rapid fire so we can get to everybody's questions? Yeah. Here's the okay. yeah. question. We yeah. answer it. You split. We answer it fast. We move on so everybody gets the answer. Nice. Next questions. Here we go. Boom. Boom. Both. First off, Michael. We can change something. Oh, we can go to it. You know, what I want. Number one, Michael. I did not wait in line for 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Say what you want. I just want to say that you are the best low-down, dirty, rotten scoundrel we yeah. ever yeah. <laughs> but you are, and I just want to know, you, man, you were excellent. You know, when I, when I did the crossover, John Cryer yeah. says he's Lex Luthor. The uh, easiest thing for me ever to say was, you know, Lex. <laughs> 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 the easiest thing for me to say, because I love Lex. Yeah. This is Lex. Yeah. Yep. That's cute. And Kristen, oh, oh. quickly, 
Christian. I know everybody's going to praise them when you I will be there. I know all that. And believe me, you are beautiful. Yeah. But I became a fan of yours because of your inner beauty, your heart, your soul, oh, your caring yeah. for human beings, your caring for certain causes. And, I just, and all I just want to tell you is I appreciate you much. And Tom, you and Clark Kent looking at Lana, I tell y'all, you made my heart melt. <laughs> we love you. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember this is rapid fire. <laughs> All right, let's try it one more time. Rapid fire, here we go. Hey, uh, Small Bull Nights was really fun last night, guys, so thanks for that. What's up, Kristen? How are you doing? Have you ever thought about doing Small Bull Nights? Oh. I've never been invited. Oh. First of all, her flight didn't get until late last night. Never been invited. Well, we'll invite you. Would you do it? Maybe. We had John, we had John Glover once, and that was amazing. He had so much fun. Uh, he's the only person that is, you know. Great, thank you. Awesome question. Thank you. Thank you. We've only got time for a few more. Rapid fire. Okay. The, the question was, uh, do you guys have a life lesson takeaway from the show? It, it teaches so many great lessons, like making sacrifices for the greater good, or secrets always lead to toxic relationships. I say lots of shows and chocolates. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> uh, Those were pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I work hard. Be prepared. Work hard. Hang up your wardrobe. Mm. Uh, yeah. Your wardrobe's a nice one. Yeah. Be good to others. Just be freaking good. How hard is it to be good to each other? I mean, it's so simple. We're such a <laughs> yeah. right. okay. Really quick. Michelle. <laughs> Hi, my name's Michelle. Um, my question <laughs> is. Take it, let's go back to the pilot episode. Um, you went off the bridge. Tom, what was your thoughts when you found out you had to give mouth to mouth resuscitation? <laughs> now that is the question to end on. That is, that is the question to end on. I remember, I, I have a memory. And would you be willing to recreate it, thank you. <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a memory, I don't know if it was a dream, but I have a memory of standing over Michael and he's like this, he's kind of dead, and kind of looking at him and opens his eyes. He opens his eyes and we look at each other, and I was about to be like, so, and he goes, just, just do it, just do it. <laughs> and I, it was just like, mm, just do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for the day. They will be at the booth and everything. Once again, everyone, time for the Thank you, guys. We love you, we love you, Michael, we love you, Tom, we love you, 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 we